And now I got a lot more separation within the muscle, but also between the muscle, because especially in the back where it's most noticeable, right? The skin is a lot thinner. Vigorous Steve here with my final thoughts on 5-Amino 1MQ, a relatively unknown, novel, but highly beneficial and as of now very expensive compound that could help people on their fat loss journey. 5-Amino 1MQ is a nicotinamide and methyl transferase inhibitor. So long story short, if you haven't watched my previous 5-Amino 1MQ videos, I would still highly advise you to watch them. You can watch them right here discussing the pharmacodynamics and how this inhibitor works. Long story short, as your fat cells gain size or as you age, nicotinamide and methyltransferase enzyme concentrations and activity increases in the fat cells, reducing the amount of fat metabolism which occurs in the fat cell itself. So over time, this might contribute to uh, gaining fat over time, right? NNMT enzyme activity has been linked to obesity. Now, 5-amino-1-MQ seems to be the only orally bioavailable cell, cell membrane permeable um, nicotinamide and methyltransferase inhibitor out of all the inhibitors examined. So this seems to be the most bioavailable one that we have at our disposal. I experimented with 5-amino-1-MQ for about eight weeks in duration. You can watch my latest blood work results here. I do feel that it has some sort of an effect on my blood work, but to be fair, I am running several different experiments at the same time, parallel to each other. So I'm not really sure if the increase in liver enzymes came from the raloxifene or the HCH frag or the 5-amino-1-MQ itself, right? Or maybe a dietary changes, right? Everything could contribute to liver enzymes increasing or lipid levels changing. So please keep that in mind. All things considering, I would not say that 5-amino-1-MQ has a tremendous negative effect on my blood work. I would like to run 5-amino-1-MQ in the future separately for maybe four weeks to see how much it affects my blood work without running other um, experiments parallel to this 5-amino-1-MQ experiment that I ran for several weeks. But as of now, I would say that 5-amino-1-MQ is highly beneficial during a fat loss journey. Just like a GLP-1 receptor agonist is highly beneficial for the people that struggle a little bit with their appetite. So instead of looking into the Adderall or the Modafinil or other stimulants to really crush your appetite with all the right potential side effects that come along with it, a GLP-1 receptor agonist like semaglutide, dulaglutide, or liraglutide could blunt your appetite sufficiently so you don't have to result to stimulatory fat burning aids or stimulatory uh, appetite suppressants for that matter to um, control your appetite and prevent you from overeating or cheating on your diet. And it's the same with 5-amino-1-MQ. A medical researcher even reached out to me after posting those 5-amino-1-MQ experiment videos and he reminded me that while fasting, especially fasting in combination with strenuous exercise, the nicotinamide and methyltransferase enzyme activity in the fat cell goes up tremendously. And again, inhibiting this process basically removes the cap of fat loss. There's no adaptation which occurs within the fat cell itself, pre preventing further lipolysis, right? From the, removing the fat from the fat cell physically, dumping that into the bloodstream, allowing you to transport that to the mitochondria to burn it off as energy, resulting in overall fat loss. So when you're fasting, this NNMT enzyme activity goes up, at later age, as you get fatter during the off-season or right, when you get into a little bit of a perma-bulking state, NNMT enzyme activity goes up. And also when you restrict calories for a prolonged period of time while dieting, while fasting, especially in combination with exercise, NNMT enzyme activity goes up preventing further fat loss, which seems to be a normal adaptive and compensatory process preventing you from losing too much fat at the same time, similar to how myostatin goes up when you gain muscle mass too rapidly, right? It's trying to slow the amount of muscle mass that you gain down slightly and nicotinamide and methyltransferase activity in the fat cell with prolonged dieting, activity goes up as a compensatory process preventing you from further fat loss. And that's why a lot of people stall 
um, as the diet continues, besides the metabolic adaptions, right? Lowering of the thyroid, lowering of the sex hormones. And this is probably also one of the limiting processes, which occurs as you progress through your diet and it goes on for weeks and weeks and weeks in duration. And at one point you get stuck. And then you still need to deploy a ton of fat burners and super low calories to really get the fat off and end up super shredded. So in all of my weeks of experimenting with 5 amino one mq and considering that I got down to about 10 to 12% body fat, so I didn't get shredded, right? I'll be the first one to admit it. I didn't get shredded. So I'm not exactly sure if 5 amino one mq can take the cap off fat loss at later stages of the diet. But judging by my fat loss, which was very, very gradual over those eight weeks that I was using 5-amino-1-MQ, I would suspect and ex expect that by the time I get down to 8%, maybe even 6%, that fat loss will continue to be gradual up until the point you reach about 4% and then it gets right, it get pretty painful. Right? Your feet start to hurt and your joints start to hurt and all of that stuff. So I think that it's highly beneficial at the later stages of fat loss where most people tend to stall due to this uh, compensatory effect by increasing uh, nicotinamide and methyltransferase activity in the fat cell, uh, reducing lipolysis and reducing the metabolism within the fat cell itself. When I'm at that point, I will just reintroduce the 5-amino-1-MQ at 150 milligrams per day, which seems to be the effective dose for me. So you know, to point that simply, let's boil that down to 1.5 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight. I felt that 100 milligrams of 5 amino 1 MQ was not that beneficial, but 150 milligrams 5 amino 1 MQ per day seemed to get the job done and gradually got the fat off. So when I feel I get stuck, reintroduce 150 milligrams 5 amino 1 MQ again without making any other manipulations to my cardio or food intake or uh, fat burning aids. And then I expect fat loss to continue worry free. Again, fingers crossed, hasn't been proven yet, but I will update you guys with that experiment once it's taking place. For now, we'll take a couple weeks off, right? Until I get stuck in my fat loss journey and I feel need to add in another compound to continue with fat loss. Again, there's no long term data on it. So, from my personal experience, after four weeks of using this compound, I felt it was working so good. The fat loss was so gradual and consistent. I, I, in the back of my head, I felt that it was going to be a trade-off. Now, again, I discussed with one of the researchers that reached out to me that did some research on NNMT enzyme activity in this uh, fasted state. From all the data that has been performed in animal studies, no real adverse effects were noted, but those were not long-term studies and were not studies performed on humans. So I'm probably the only one who did um, some sort of anecdotal study on himself running 5-amino-1-MQ for a prolonged period of time with the before and after blood work results and the before and after progress pictures. Um, probably the only human in existence who's done that so far. Um, but yeah, the results have been so good that I felt in the back of my head that there was going to be a trade-off at one point. So that's why I'm discontinuing it for now. What I've noticed in the time that I was running this 5-amino-1-MQ experiment is that the fat loss was uniform, gradual, everywhere. Most notably, my back got a lot leaner and my abs, which is usually a place where I struggle with. So I feel that my abs come in last. Previously, I would have shredded glutes or lines in my glutes before I really had a deep uh, ab separation, right? Especially in the intercostals and the obliques and the, in the lower abs. And I felt that during this period, again, keep in mind I had HGH frank and raloxifene in the picture, uh, which could also potentiate uh, some fat loss or um, mitigate some of the estrogen-related fat storage in the breast tissue or the legs. Keep that in mind, right? We have to take everything into consideration, guys. But I felt during this period that the fat loss of my abs and my back was substantial. And I've never seen the detail that I have in my back probably in a very long time, right? The last two diets that I did where I did photo shoots, my back was not as detailed and separated as it is now, but I'm at a much higher body fat percentage. So previously I would run uh, TW1516, SR9009, Glenn, Rubolcin, perhaps in combination, right? With pharmaceutical grade growth hormone at dosages ranging from two units to six units and sometimes even eight units per day, right? 
I'll potentiate a decent amount of fat loss by themselves and especially in combination. Now my back is a lot more detailed. I've got detail that I've never seen. There's striations in my rear delts that I've never seen. I feel that this 5-amino-1-MQ is removing some of the fat contained within the muscle. Right? If you buy a steak, for example, you have a little bit of marbling within, right? And that happens in humans also, especially if you do a long off-season diet, perhaps with high calories and insulin, a little bit of marbling of the skeletal muscle occurs. That's why when you start doing a contest prep or diet down deeply, right, the fat gets restricted so much to take care of this marbling. Right? Because estrogen might have been higher during the off-season. Again, calories might have been higher. Insulin might have been used. And it's not something that you see in an ultrasound, which I've also done on some of my um, skeletal muscles to see if there was any um, scar tissue buildup in the upper glutes, for example, or the upper quads. I asked them to ultrasound my entire quads to see if there was any marbling. Um, but it's not something that the sonographer can see, or that's not something you'll see on the ultrasound results. So long story short, if there was any marbling present in my skeletal muscle, I feel that a course of eight weeks of 5-amino-1-MQ pretty much resolved that. And now I got a lot more separation within the muscle, but also between the muscle, because especially in the back where it's most noticeable, right? The skin is a lot thinner. It's, it, it's still thick, right? I'm not in uh, shredded conditioning, but I think I'm about eight weeks of 5-amino-1-MQ away when fat loss starts to stall to really get into a phenomenal shredded conditioning in, in, with, with detail that I've never had in the past. Really, like even at my most shredded when I was the most lean at a couple of years ago, or when I would do diets, uh, crash diets, drug free, where I would end up stringy but highly separated and detailed because I didn't uh, right have any scar tissue. I feel that the, the detail is now pretty much the best ever. The back thickness of the skin, right? The, not the, the skeletal muscle that's always pretty solid, but the, the thickness of the skin on the back is the thinnest ever, I would say. And in that sense, again, it's it's like I'm taking the cap of fat loss in particular areas and making that fat loss more gradual and gradual and gradual, not only in the skin, but potentially in the skeletal muscle as well, where I might have lost some separation due to marbling potentially. Again, I haven't done an ultrasound which detected marbling or done a biopsy on skeletal muscle to detect marbling through that. Uh, method of analysis. I'm just going by what I see in the mirror. <laughs> what I see in the mirror right now is, um, yeah, I'm happy with what I see so far, right? My fat loss journey has not completed yet. That's why I will make some modifications going forward. So even though this is my uh, final verdict on 5-amino-1-MQ being a highly promising compound, albeit difficult to source and uh, mad expensive <laughs> as of now, um, I would recommend you to keep this compound on your radar um, consider a combination, if you can afford it, of liraglutide, semaglutide with 5-amino-1-MQ and then exclude all the stimulatory fat burners, uh, the clenbuterols, the T3s, the, the, the SR9009s, the, right, the GW1516, the uh, revulsin, the Johanbein, etc., etc., etc. Just ru run a traditional appetite suppressant with a, uh, mimicking a bioidentical hormone uh, which is released uh, after eating. And this uh, nicotinamide n methyltransferase inhibitor, 5-amino-1-MQ, run both of those. If you can afford it and if you can source both compounds. I think your fat loss will be gradual and so easy to the, f to the point you feel you're cheating, especially if you've done diets in the past where you're suffering hardcore and right, your hands are shaking all the time because you're megadosing the clan and whatever else. It feels like the diet is not even happening until you take your progress pictures and just every week, leaner, more separated, leaner, more separated, leaner, more separated. And you're not even suffering for it, right? It feels like a giant hack, even though you're paying financially for it. Because again, liraglutide and 5-amino-1-MQ are certainly not cheap. And um, well, even though there's long-term data on liraglutides or semaglutide for that matter, uh, no long-term data on 5-amino-1-MQ. So, right, fingers crossed, um, it stays as promising as uh, the medical literature makes it uh, seem to be as of now, and that there's not uh, some study coming out 10 years from now where 
5 amino 1 MQ is associated with various cancers. Never know, right? Um, yeah, so as of now, <laughs> with the information that we have at our disposal and the research that I've done and the results that I've gotten, um, very promising. Yeah, I would say so myself. Stay tuned for more data as it comes out, whether that's from the medical field or through future experimentations that I will document on this channel. For now, I would say this is also a five-star compound, but I will deduct <laughs> one point, one star for price and availability, right? So if it's available and affordable to you, it's a five-star compound. And for everybody else that can't afford it or can't source it, it's just a four-star compound that you need to keep in your radar until it ever gets FDA approved, which wouldn't surprise me if it gets FDA approved at one point or another and gets prescribed to resolve obesity or diabetes and all these metabolic disorders that um, general population seems to suffer from in combination with the GLP-1 receptor agonist. And then, well, if that happens 10 years from now, um, yeah, you can remind yourself that Coach Steve told you so. I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the eBooks on my website, vigorousteve.com slash shop. Personalized advice, always available through consultations. You can find the rates in the consultations section. Follow me on Instagram at vigorousteve. New age experimentation, front double bicep for the Vigors crew. You guys are very loyal. Thanks for your likes and your comments. If you double comment at the beginning and the end of the video, another front double bicep for you guys. You comment twice, you get twice the front double biceps. All right, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video, which is probably going to be about my um, experimentation about HCH frag, which... Well, I'm still a little bit undecided, but I'll make a video about it anyway. And then you can make up your mind if you want to run HCH frag by yourself. Thank you guys. See you in the next one.